Hey guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be going through this snow particle system. I'm not going to be covering how to do the material on the floor because that's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'll do that in another video at another time. So we're just going to be focusing on this particle system. So, let's make a new project and then in your content folder create the folder that you're going to be using. And then the first thing we're going to need is a material. I'm going to call this snow underscore m. Double click to open it up. On the left hand side, change to translucent, and we're going to keep this as a default lip for now. Now, we're going to need a particle color node because we're going to be using this to decide the color of our snow. Hold m and left click for a multiply. Plug the top pin into a, and then plug this into base color. Next, we need something to create our shape. We're just going to use a circle, so a radial gradient exponential. Plug this into B, and now you'll notice that this will become a black circle, a white circle, rather, on a black background. There we are. Now we don't want it to be quite like this, so hold S and left click twice to get two scalar parameters. Plug the first into radius, the second into density. Change the first one. Ooh, first one's named to radius. I'm going to set this to 0.5. The second one changes to density. Which changes to 5. Okay, so now we'll create another multiply node. Take the alpha from the particle color and the radial gradient. Plug this into the opacity. And now we'll get A nice circle. We'll apply that and save. Now, right click, particle system, snow underscore p. Open this up to bring up the cascade. We need to change our emitter, so click on required. Change the default particle to our snow. Now right click, type data, new GPU sprites, because we're going to use a lot of them. We're going to leave the bounds for now, so that we remember to do this afterwards. Once our little circles start popping in, we're going to start changing things. There we are. So click on spawn, we're going to make 5,000 of these. Next lifetime. We're going to want a minimum of 5 seconds and a maximum of 10. So some of them are going to melt in the air before they're, they're finished. Their initial size, we're going to want a maximum of 10 on all values and a minimum of 5 on all values. And we get a nice variation of sizes. We need to change their velocity because they're going in the wrong direction. So 200, 200, minus 300. And then we want a minus 200 minus 200, minus 250. And now we have this nice cone spray. But this isn't quite how we want our snow to fall. So right click, location, initial location. We want a maximum of 2000, 2000, and then 50. Minimum of minus 2000, minus 2000, and then again 50. And now you'll notice that they're falling in this nice, wide open area. Right click, rotation, initial rotation. We want this between 0 and 10. Now you can see that some of them are spinning as they fall, which is nice. It looks like they're being affected by wind. Right click again, rotation rate, initial rotation rate. We're just going to leave this default 0, 1. Next, right click, collision, collision seam depth click on this. By default they're set to bounce, we want to kill. That way they're destroyed when they hit an object. Finally, if we check out our bounds, they're tiny. You can't even see them. There they are over there. I just See that? A little speck. Click this little arrow, set fixed bounds, and now our bounds are bigger than our particle system. This means that they'll render even if we're not looking at the emitter. Okay, so save. Restart sim, restart level. 
let's drag this in there to check them out. If we drag the particle system up, because snow falls from the sky, we could just have the snow spawn higher, but we can fix that afterwards. Hmm. I just saw an extra emitter that's not emitting anything. Hello! It's for what I was testing with earlier. Alright, so if we go down and we click off the particles, and we look up, you'll notice that they're not very bright, and they're quite blurry. Especially if we click play. You see that they're they're quite blurred. We don't want this. Because we're gonna add more detail later and we wanna be able to see the detail. So we're gonna go back into our material. Just hold down one and click for a constant. Change this to one and plug it into the emissive colour. And now our circle will glow. <coughs> Only slightly. So what we need to do is we need to add something to all of this so that we're not getting any motion blur. This multiply, we're no longer going to use it. We'll delete that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use particle speed. Particle speed to determine how much blur we're going to want. But we're not going to want the actual speed value, so we're going to hold down S for a scalar. We're just going to call this speed. Come on, speed divide. We're going to set this to a default of 700. Oops, I put an extra zero. I have distractions in the background today. Hold D, left click for divide. Speed in to A, our scalar into B. Now we're going to clamp these values to make sure that they're between zero and one. The reason that we're clamping them is because we're going to lerp, and that's going to act as an alpha. Alphas are black and white values between 0 and 1, so we need the clamp to make sure that it doesn't go over or, be or, or, or below what our alpha requires. So now we lerp this together. We're, we're only wanting to use the radial gradient with an added alpha, so we're just going to lerp between itself. We'll drag off of here and we're going to multiply. And what we're going to need is particle motion blur fade in the particles, not constants. And plug this into the B. Now hold M and left click for another multiply. We're going to plug this into here. We'll plug this straight into the opacity. Now hold M for another multiply. Plug this into the B of that one. We want to take this lerp value and place it into this multiply here. Now, right click. We want to get pixel depth. Hello, pixel depth. We just want a, a zero value because we're using a mask. So we're going to get the depth and then mask it between the depth and zero, so we need a sphere mask. Pixel depth into A, zero into B. Click this. The radius we want to change to 1200. The hardness we're going to change to just 10. Now we're going to hold L, left click for a lerp. Plug this into the alpha, because we're using this as a mask. Plug this into the multiplier. And that should be that. So we're still using our radial gradient, but we're getting pixel speed, dividing it and clamping it between 0 and 1 to use as a mask, which is then being multiplied by blur, which is then being removed depending on pixel depth. Right, so apply and save. Now you'll notice that they're not blurring anymore, and they look a lot clearer and a lot crisper. This is exactly what we wanted, which is great. 
So now, we need to add a bit more variation to our snow. So I'm going to right click this, I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to change the name to snow underscore unlit underscore m. Okay. We're going to go in, we're just going to change this to unlit. And then take this multiplier and plug it into the emitter instead. There we are. Okay. We're going to go to into our particle system again. We're going to set this at the top, right click, emitter, and we're going to duplicate it. We're going to go into the required of this one, and we're going to change this to our unlit material. We're going to save that. However, yeah, there we go. You see, you can see these ones in here are a bit grayer, so we've got some that are a little bit darker now, which is quite nice. Okay. Now, one thing that I have forgotten is that you're going to need a snowflake. I've got this one here that I've just downloaded from the internet. So, I'm going to Ah, here it is. Place it into a relevant folder. There we go. Now I've got my snowflake in the right folder here. So when you get your snowflake, you're going to want to import it in, or you can just take it into your own content folder like I just did. And if you've set your your folders up correctly, they should automatically import. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the original and we're going to duplicate it again. I'm going to call this one snowflake underscore m. Now I'm going to open this up, and we're going to take our snowflake texture, drag it in. Now we're using a snowflake now. We don't need the radial anymore, so we're going to get rid of this. So goodbye radial. We're going to take the white pin here, plug it into the multiplier up here because we're going to be using the actual texture in our base color now. And we're going to use the red and green pins as our lerp in the alpha with the clamp. Come on, little snowflake. There we are. So now we have our nice snowflake. Okay, we'll apply that. Go back into the snow particle system. Let's duplicate again. In required, we're going to change this to uh, snowflake underscore material. There we go, you can see that it's trying to load them in here. See the little black squares coming down. You can do it, particle emitters, come on. Now you can see that we've got some snowflake shapes in there. Nice. Save that again. Now we're going to duplicate the snowflake and we're just going to call this snowflake underscore unlit underscore m. We're going to go in. We are going to change this to unlit. Take the multiply and put it into the emissive. Apply, save. <coughs> okay, you can see that it's uh, slightly darker than the other one that we've just made. 
go back into our particle system again. Emitter, duplicate the emitter required, change this to our snowflake unlit material. And we'll restart and save. And now, when they finally decide to come down, here they come. Ooh. There we go. We have some nice snow. So, one of the things that we did earlier was the, the pixel depth in the material. What this has done is it's basically made a radius that these will render in, despite the fact that they're falling even further away. If you'll notice, you can't see beyond a certain distance. This stops it from being too thick in game so that you can't see ahead. I mean, you can remove that if you want to and try to obscure player vision. I like this way because you still get the maximum effect of the snow, but you can still see into the distance, which is which is preferable to me. Um, so we will close that down. Uh, so right now we are spawning quite a lot of um, particles, so we're probably just going to down them all to 2,500 on each. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Now one thing that we can do is, uh, if we decide that we actually want the the circular ones to be more of a blue tint, um, to be more like sleet or rain, we can go into color over life, and in the in value we'll just change this to something a bit bluer. Not too blue. I'm just going to save this color, and we're going to go into the out value and just make sure that it's the same value. And they when they pop off. I'm going to put the same in this circle. There you go. Now you can, you can see that they're, those ones are a bit bluer. It might be a little bit too blue, but sometimes a bit more colour is nice. So you have it. They're a bit too blue, but but they're okay. So yeah, there we have it. We have snow. Um, hopefully you guys can use this. Hopefully it's useful for you. Best timing ever. Thank you, Craig. Um, forgot that my Skype was logged in. If you found this tutorial um, helpful, then drop me a like, subscribe. I'll be doing more of these in the future. Thank you and goodbye.